Our teaching today is going to be based on Matthew chapter 13, verse 52, which is the parable of the scribe instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. The parable of the scribe instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, which says, Then he said unto them, Every scribe is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a good house, ha, householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things both new and old. I repeat. Then he said unto them, Every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a good householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things both new and old. Kiswahili? Haka waambia, kwa sababu hiyo, kila muandishi mwenye elimu ya ufalme wa mbinguni, amefanana na mtu mwenye nyumba atoaye katika hazina yake, vitu vipya na liyakare. Yes. So, who is a scribe? Who is a scribe? A scribe uh, is a true minister of the gospel who are furnished with all divine gifts <coughs> and graces proper for that sacred employment. So a scribe is a teacher, especially, especially pastors of churches. These are scribes, wandishi. So anybody who is called by God to do the work of teaching or ministering in a church, those are the ones which are called scribes. Those are the ones which are called scribes. So by the kingdom of heaven, uh, here is meant the dispensation of the gospel or a gospel church. So whenever Christ talk of the kingdom of heaven, he means a gospel church. So, by a household, this household means here a spiritual family, a spiritual family, like now, the way you are now, you are a spiritual family. Sasa. Mm. Uh, by treasure, because you have heard that this person, if you go back to to the, to the verse, it says, uh, this scribe is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, is like unto a good householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure, out of his treasure. So, what is this treasure? By this treasure, is meant heavenly wisdom. By treasure here is meant heavenly wisdom. Knowledge or knowledge, gifts or graces and experiences of all these things. These are heavenly uh, treasure. 
You know, if you want to prove that, you read 2 Corinthians 4 7. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 7. Haraka? Mm -hmm. Lakini tuna hazina hii katika vyombo vya udongo. Uh, ili adama kuu ya uwezo iwe ya mungu wala si kutoka kwetu. That is it. Kingereza? But we have this treasure in other vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Yeah. We have this treasure on other vessels so that the excellence of it should not be from man. When we say we have this treasure, it means we people or ministers or pastor, whoever is teaching these things, we are other vessel. But God has seen fit to give us or to put that treasure in us. Because this treasure is not earthly. That's one thing we should understand. It's a heavenly treasure. But God has seen it fit to give, to put that heavenly treasure unto an earthen vessel. An earthen vessel here is man. So, the doctrine is a good and faithful minister of the gospel ought to be like a rich householder. See now, whoever is a gospel minister should be a rich householder. Ever have store of spiritual provisions or have a well a, a stored storehouse that he may bring forth all sorts of heavenly food and not to have his provision to seek, to seek when his guests are come together to partake thereof. That means if you want to be a pastor or a minister, you are a householder because you have been made a steward of God in the house of who? The house of God. And in this house, being a householder, you need to have everything in order to be able to feed that family. So this, Yanni, we want to see what Christ was teaching. The parables Christ was teaching deeper truth for us to understand. Here, there's a householder. Christ is saying, this householder, because you have been given by God the treasure of God, you are another vessel, but God has given you a treasure, and this treasure is very rich, because they are heavenly material. You need to have everything of this heavenly material and yani, before you so that you can give it or you can give to your family or to the family of this house. Sasa. So, God is the chief and proper spiritual householder. Ministers and pastors of churches are but steward of God's house. Though we are part of this house of God, but the owner of this house is who? Is God himself. The owner of this house is God himself. And this, and this, uh, uh, and the pastors of the churches in this house are going to act as Stewards. Who is a steward? Who is a steward? So a steward is a person who manages the property or affairs for another entity. Yeah. 
a person who manages an affair of another entity. So you, God, you can say this house, God is a householder. And though you are acting on behalf of God in this house, you are also in the place of God because you own that house. But God, you are only acting as a steward. You are only acting as a steward. God is the owner of everything. But whatever you are going to do, you are going to do as a steward. You are managing the property for another person. For another person, because the properties are not yours. For the pro yeah, that's good. For the properties are not yours. So it is a high honor that is conferred upon 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 people when Christ called them householders. It's a high honor when some when God or Christ call the pastors or teachers the householder because they are only steward in that house. They are only doing it for God. So they are honored. They are appointed by who? By God. So you come on apart. They are appointed by God. So even if you go to to a king or a prince, it's a high honor when a king appoints you in his house to do a certain job. In fact, you'll thank him many times. So it is a honor given to whoever to be a householder, to be a steward in that house of God. Why? Because the family is not theirs. But who? The Lord. You know, what I, what I do here, for example, you are the Lord's family because you are children of God. But when I start here, it's a big honor when God has made me a steward. You see, a steward to do what? To dispense his quote, his treasure unto you. So he has given me, and I'm doing what? Distribute? Distribute. Distributing to you. That's the work of a minister. That's the work of a pastor. So a minister is to dis distribute the God's treasure. Because God has made you, has given you that treasure so that you may give to God's family. So that's why we say it's a great honor when God does that to you. It shows the respect God has for you. So we want to see uh, why pastors or ministers are compared to householders. Sasawa, why are they compared to householders, the ministers or pastors? One, they may be called householders in this sense because as deputy householder is chosen by his Lord to that office, so is every true and faithful minister or pastor of a church chosen and called by the Lord to that holy office and employment. That's why they are called householder. But not all of them are called by God. They are those who have called themselves. They are those who are not God ministers, but they minister for themselves. They are driven by their daily. That's why most of the pastors or ministers, sometimes they don't even, even know what this God's treasure is. They don't even have, have it. So, they are not chosen by the Lord immediately, 
but immediately sasa how sometimes in a church uh, these ministers they are not chosen immediately that means not directly by god but immediately through the people there comes a time when you want to choose a minister or a pastor that's when we keep, we say the church they lay, they lay their hands on a somebody to be a pastor of a church so most of the time they are selected or elected into an office through elections and suffrage of the church if you read act 20 28 in a similar manner act 2028 Kitoseni na kusezenu na lile kundi lote nalo ambalo Roho Mtakatifu ameweka nyinyi kuwa waangalizi ndani yake mpate kulilisha kanisa lake Mungu alilo linunua kwa damu yake mwenyewe Kiingereza Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of god which he has purchased with his own blood that is it the holy ghost has made paul here is talking to pastors in efesa tunaenda sema najua mimi ya kuwa baada ya kuondoka kwangu mungu wa mtu wakali wataingia kwenu wasi wasilihurumie kundi Mm. What's in the, you see now here Paul here is talking to a, to pastors in Ephesus a church he is telling them the holy ghost has made you overseer of these people you are the steward now take care of these people otherwise otherwise we are going to come some we are, to, we are going to have some people who are going to come into this house and how to find any they are not going to teach they are not going to teach the, this treasure of god they are not going to teach the truth these people walete mafundisho ya dini ya upotofu ya upotofu ambayo itachanganya wengi na wengi watafanya nini watapotoka watapotoka ni kweli e kiingereza hebu soma na kiingereza sema for i know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock yeah not sparing grievous wolf that not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them among yourself they are going to crop up some other people calling themselves te- teachers. teachers of the gospel and they are going even to draw most of the, most of the disciples to themselves meaning paul As a servant of God he was foreseeing the future of the church. And no wonder when you tell people that many of today's many and ministries they are those wolves Paul was talking about. Because these people they don't teach the treasure this treasure of of the gospel to the to the congregation they don't they don't care. All what they want is what is money. But as child a pastor who is chosen by God he is not after these worldly riches he is going to to earn to to work day and night studying learning the truth because he want to be truly a steward in the house of God he doesn't want to be a wolf so these teachers 
or this T word, they may be called householder in respect of that great charge and trust which is committed to them. Trust. You know, that's when I, 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 I tell you, before I come and teach you anything here, I can tell you, I repeat it not once, not twice. I check properly that what I'm going to teach, it is in line with what? With the true doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it must be in line with the gospel. Not minds, words, no. So a steward is that person or a householder who is very, very accurate to give what God has given him. So a steward or a householder of a lord or a noble person has the charge of all the family committed unto him to provide all things necessary for them out of his master's treasure. You see now, why should I not give you that treasure as a, as a pastor or a teacher? And yet this treasure is not mine. Did you have another one? You have just been made a steward. God has appointed you. This is my this is what this is my riches. And I want you to do what? To distribute. So if I don't give out my Lord's treasure, then I don't belong to that I don't I don't belong to that household. Because that whatever is there, it's not mine. It's the Lord's. And the Lord has seen fit to make you a, a steward. It is not even you who have chosen yourself. We are talking of those people who are uh, 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 stewards in the, in the Christ church. It is not you yourself who is going to make yourself a steward in the house of God. God is going to make you a steward. He is going to give you his treasure. You distribute. So, a pastor or a minister of a, of a particular church has the charge of the said church and every member thereof committed unto him to provide and lay in provision for to feed them with suitable and proper food. Though it is all Christ's own charge. Come to Kumanisha, if a king gives you something to distribute, you should distribute that thing. That's what Christ is teaching with this parable. You should dis distribute all what God has given you. Just like someone when he's employed in the, in the palace of a king and king's provisions and, God's, and, and the king gives you a right to distribute whatever he has. The same things happen in the church of God. Only we have this difference that there are those who are not called by God. They are not called in this house. So they don't give the treasure of God. They don't give the treasures of God. Otherwise, as you are going to see, in this house of God, you can lack nothing. Liwambia, if we are going to study the word of God, we shall study the word of God till eternity. And there is no one time we are going to exhaust the treasure of God. No one time. So a steward is given, who is open to this treasure, he has everything given unto him. Hakuna siku wata moja watu watasema, apana. Hakuna kitu ya kukuna. No, no. Unless you are, unless you are God you are, you are yourself. 
But God is infinite. We shall never know God unto perfection because we are finite creature. So we can ever, we, we shall ever be learning about God in all our lifetime. So, this treasure is the Lord's money which he had which a steward has received. is the Lord's money. All those gifts and endowment which a minister has by which he is capacitated to provide for and feed that household, he received it from Christ. So it's Lord's money. So a minister, whatever you teach, whatever you preach, whatever ministers give to the congregation, it is the Lord's money. He has nothing. He has brought nothing from himself. And that's why you see many want to teach because of pride. Then, because they think that they are better than the other people so they are full of pride and that pride automatically shows that they are not giving out the Lord's treasure. They are giving out their own treasure which they are proud of. Mwana wa mungu wabaye amejua ukweli. At the end one time, ya ye wanga na nyenye kea. Kwa sababu, let me tell you the truth. The more you know the truth, the more unakuta haujui. The more you know the truth, the more unakuta haufanyi nini? Haujui. And the little you know, the more unaona unafanya nini? Unajua. Na ndi unaona wala watu wanajua ukweli kidogo sana, they are very proud. They want to be teachers. They want to be uh, ministers. They want to teach others. But they have very little knowledge of God. But the more you learn the truth, mimi yu nikitu nime prove that Right now, mimi wanga nafika naona as if I know nothing. Nikiangalia yale mungu anakuonyesha ambaye, they are so deep thing, you know, kabisa, you need to learn more than even what you have learned. Mimi kuna kate thought that there come a time that I'll have say, I'll say, now nimesoma sana and I have everything and I'm now satisfied, I have known God. But let me tell you, the more you study the word of God, the more you know that you don't know. Now the word of God, inakufanya hata unyenyeke, baka unona kapisa kapisa, you know nothing, my friend. Unokuta kapisa, you know nothing. There are things that I'll, one day, God willing, I'll teach you here, that you, you won't believe them. That utakuja kuona, they are, yeah, the, the word of God, is so deep that by our own understanding, sometimes it's by, it's by God's grace if you want yani, akupende, uweso kuyaona na kuyaelewa. So, no man has any spiritual ability of his own to do it. No man. No man has any spiritual ability of his own to do it. Nor would, nor would it be to the honor of Christ that he should, at his own proper charge, feed his Lord's household. Even Christ himself, he doesn't want, he, it is not his wish that I should stand here with my own power and my own knowledge to teach, and to teach people. Even Christ himself knows that he, that cannot happen. All what you are going to give, it must be Lord's, the Lord's money. It must come from him. Because we are creature and Christ is God. So what can you have from yourself to give people? What can you have? Nothing. Nothing. Because why? The talent of bodily strength is of the Lord. Natural or acquired parts and improvement, as well as his talent of time, grace, and all spiritual gifts are the Lord's. If I stand here now, what, what can I say 
it is mine. Yeah? What? Even the strength to stand here is for the Lord. For the Lord. Even the wisdom that I have, it's of the Lord. It's not mine. So, what, yeah, and what can make me boast? Can I boast that I know more than the others? No. Because if I'm left unto my own, I know nothing. If Christ is going to leave me unto my own, then I'll know nothing. I have nothing of my own. The wisdom I have is the Lord. The knowledge you have is the Lord. So, you can see that for, for you to be a minister of God, you must understand that God has given you everything in his house in order to distribute, starting from your strength, starting from your wisdom, everything is for the Lord. So, a minister and pastor of a church of Christ may be compared to a steward or deputy householder in respect of that faithfulness that he, ought to, that he ought to manifest in the discharge of his great trust and office. Deputy householder. It was 1 Corinthians 4.2. 1 Corinthians 4.2. Nasema, hapo tena inayo hita jiwa katika mawakili, niyo mtu awanekane kuwa mwaminiwa. Mhm. Ibuso mara kingereza? Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It is required in steep steward. steward that a man be found faithful. Must be found faithful. You must be faithful. Faithful in no way. And when we say faithful here, we should know that it is to be faithful unto who? Both unto God and unto who? Unto man. So, a steward is not somebody who is not faithful. Sometimes he is a liar. Meaning he is not faithful to God. Because he doesn't teach what God wants. The treasure of God. He is teaching his own lies. Sasa. So, the faithfulness of a steward or a householder consists in these things. One, it consists in his seeking and preferring the honor of his blessed Lord above all things. Seeking. So, to be faithful here, Nataka Musikie, it consists in his seeking and preferring the honor of his blessed Lord above all things. He is not, he is not to seek his own glory. The true steward, the true steward, he must seek all the time the Lord's honor, not his own glory. As we see with many present pastors, I'm a ministers. Many seek their own glory. Many want to be known. That's why they call people to miracles. Because, because they want to do some miracles so that they may people may see that truly they are ministers, of which they are not seeking God's glory. They are not seeking God's glory. They are seeking their own glory. So they are not faithful to Christ. He is not to seek his own glory, a true minister, nor his own self-interest. Self-interest. There are many ministers today who are in, in Christ's household who are seeking their own interest. True? Their own interest. They want money. They are after money, but not glory. They don't even understand. They don't even have this treasure. They don't even know what God's treasure is. Even this gospel, they just teach their own things. Because they are seeking their own. See now. 
If you read first Corinthians 4 6 in the same number again. First Corinthians 4 6. 4 6 in the same. Basi ndugu. Mambo hayo ni me ya fanya kuwa mfano wa mimi na Apollo kwa ajili yenu. Ili kwamba kwa mfano wetu mpate kujifunza kutokupita yale yaliyoandikwa ili mmoja wenu asijifune kwa ajili ya huyu kinyume cha mwenziwe. Hebu soma na Kiingereza. And these things brethren I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written mm -hmm. that no one of you be puffed up for one against another mm -hmm. if so ma root back in that uh, the same verse 5 turn verse 5 na sema therefore 4 5 mm -hmm. Therefore, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, mm -hmm. and, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Mm -hmm. And then shall every man have praise of God. Mm -hmm. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men, Above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. So you know, you know there was there, there was a part there, there was a time I have forgotten that verse why he has named this Apollo. There were people in the churches who say they were for Apollo. Now some other said me and for Paul. So Paul is. He, he, and Paul there is referring to that point that in a church you should understand you know he is telling them I have brought that to light so that you may know you may understand that we as a steward of God we are all doing the work of God and God's gift God can give different gift to different ministers so if you read Verse 7 of that in the same Nagan. Mana ni nani anaye kupambanua na mwingine nawe unanini usicho kipokea lakini iwapo ulipokea wajisifia nini kana kwamba hukupokea Eh Kiingereza For who maketh thee to differ from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive Now if you did receive it, why does thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Yeah. You see now, here Paul is telling them, or he's telling the Corinthians, or he's telling us through the Corinthians, what hast thou? Everything that you have is for the Lord. Why do you boast of what you have? Why do you boast as if what you have, you never received it? And yet you received it from who? From the Lord. So in short, you know, I'm a true minister of God is not supposed to boast of anything. He's not supposed to glory because of his, of his own understanding. Because everything that he has is a gift. Is a gift. Everything that that person has is a gift from God. Why should you boast? We are Adam Feso, uh, given the, this treasure by God, and we should not glory because of anything or think we know more than other people know. Otherwise, if that spirit come in you, then you are not a true steward of God. So, some seem to glory in themselves. As if they, they fed, as if they, they fed the people and household of Christ with their own provision, being swelled with the pride, or puffed up as a bladder. That's why, if you want to know a fake steward or a fake minister of Christ, you look at the present times 
pastors and ministers. These people are very full of pride. The, world, the way they walk on, on stages, the, the, the eloquence of language, you see their, their character. They are driven by pride. And that's why here Paul is saying, why are you boasting? If truly you know you are given by God, why should you boast in for other people? In fact, that's why even when Paul went to uh, Athens, when he met these, these philosophers, these learned people, they said, let us hear what this babbler is going to say. Because he never went in front of them with a lot of eloquence, language. The word was scared. Apana. He went there very lowly. In fact, he was even fearing that these people wouldn't understand him. Because he, 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 he can never talk like the learned of this world. You know the learned of this world, they are full of pride. But Paul went in front of them with a fuller language. When we say a fuller language, we mean a language, yes, it is English, it is whatever he was talking, but it is not very yani, uh, 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 straight. You know, there is, he cannot be compared with the lawyers. That's what we get, you know, he went with a fuller language. And he, in fact, that was a minister of God. Why? Because he went with meekness. He went with meek, uh, uh, meekness. So here, that's why we are told that uh, a steward should, um, should be a man of faith, faithfulness in God. He must be a, a, a man of faithful. So what does that mean? The faithfulness of this household, householder, or steward of Christ does consist in their great care. Their great care and utmost diligence in seeking after and minding the, their Lord's concerns and business in his house and family where they are set. To be faithful is to make sure that that house where you are given, that household where you are, you are, you are made a steward, you should be very accurate. You should be faithful with that work. You should study, you, you, should, you, you should be diligent in teaching what God has given you. Don't take things for granted. Don't say, my, my Lord has, has have just only five people or two people to teach. No. Teach as if you are teaching 5,000 people. Even if they are three people. You should be faith, faithful. Otherwise, if the Lord has given you five, you mean he doesn't know? Huh? The same Lord can give you 5,000. So if he has given you three people, why should you say now, I'm not going to, uh, to teach because I have only five people? No. Be faithful to your Lord. Why? Because he is all no knowing. And he knows what? Why? So many people they will despise a small congregation. Thinking that they need to address a multitude of people thinking that that's the time they are doing the work of God. You might have thousands and thousands of people, and yet they are not the sheep of God. So, who are you to judge? 
be faithful in whatever God has given you. Sasa, if you read 1 Timothy 4.15, nasema mna gani? 1 Timothy 4.15, soma. Kwa tafakari hayo, ukaya katika hayo, hili kuendelea kwa kukue dahili kwa watu wote. Kigresa? Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Yeah, give thyself up holy to them. Give thyself up holy to them, that the profit may appear to all. Don't say, now I, I cannot do this because of this. No, give yourself ho, holy. Timothy and Abiwa, jipati, ujitowe. Kusabu, there is no way you can say now, it is not the time for me uh, to work myself holy because there's a time coming. Who knows? Who knows? So to be faithful, it is to be faithful unto God with a little as the highest. Such that will not leave their own secular affairs. If the church is able to provide a comfortable maintenance for them or to have this office conferred upon them. So there are some people because of secular affairs, when you say secular, it is, it is employment. And sometimes, even the church, uh, is, sometimes is not even able to provide for you. Or sometimes the church can provide for you. And in all this while, when a church cannot provide for you, God is providing for you. God cannot call a steward in his household. And if, you know, it is, it is for example, there was a time when we started this uh, reformation, we had a controversy with some people. Because there were some people who are saying, now, in every church, you know, we need to be paid. We have heard it here. We need to be paid. Because there were some who, when we were starting Reformation, they had another, uh, another vision of a church where they are going to benefit. With what? With the salaries to be paid. But then, I told them, okay, yes, God knows everything. If he has called you to a congregation where these people cannot pay you, you mean God cannot give you, cannot pay you? He can. There are so many ways God can, can give you survivors. If they will come, I, you know, I, I said, if there will come a time when, when we have a bigger congregation, and there are some time, yeah, yeah, sorry, there are some people who will have full time employment unto the church and we have money. You give that person what? Pay him, isn't it? Yeah. Pay him because you have, God has brought that wealth in the church and he knows through your pocket you can pay who? That person. But if he has not given that, that, he has not opened that door, why do you want to force something that God has not opened? So that when I come here, I start yani, yani, uh, crying, telling people, you know, I don't have something to eat, you know, you should look for this. That is not, that is not the way the work of God is going to be, yani, supposed to be done but the true ministers of God. Why? Paul is an example. Paul, when he was called, he was never paid anything by the church. In fact, 
even we are told that sometimes those people who are with him in the ministry, because Paul had some business to do, he used to even to pay them. But you know what Paul said? He never closed the door that when you have somebody who has no employment that is not giving him money. But he himself, he stood with his own money throughout his time. He was never paid a penny. In fact, there are even some times where you, you read that he was given some money from this church and he took the, he had the same money to another church to help some other people. But you say, you'll find that in today's time, even those pastors or ministers has made a lot of money, they still want more. They still want more. They still want to tax the congregation. If he was going with a small vehicle, he want to go with a bigger vehicle. As if that small vehicle cannot make him reach where he is going. So, all these things are not signs of yeah, the true ministers of Christ. True ministers of Christ. So, to be faithful is to be holy. They are give thyself holy to whoever God has given you. Another point uh, this faithfulness consists in taking care rightly to dispense uh, your master's goods or to feed Christ's household with such food that he has ordained or appointed for them. This faithfulness or to be, faith, to be a faithful steward, you must make sure, or a minister or a pastor must make sure that what he gives to the, to the people, he gives them the right food. That which God has given you, you give to, to the people. You give them the right food. If you read 1 Peter 2, 2, the Busoma, Read First Peter two two. Kama watoto wachanga waliozaliwa sasa ya tamanini maziwa ya akiri ya sio washiwa ili kwa hayo mpate kuulia wakofu. Mhm. Mm you yani like children of God desire the sincere milk of the word. The sincere milk of the word. Why? Because this milk is what you are going to grow by. You read 1 Peter 2 2. Yeah. 1 Peter 2 2 in English. Please. As newborn babes uh -huh. desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Which means. When I give you the right word, when somebody, a preacher, teaches you the right word or the doctrine as it is in our Lord Jesus Christ, that is a sincere milk. That is a milk. And you are going to grow by. That's what people have never known. You might teach many things without the Spirit of God. And without teaching the proper gospel as it is in Jesus Christ, then you are not giving milk to those people. So to be faithful is to teach the sincere milk of the word of God. You teach the word of God as it is. Don't teach your own things. See now, and that's why if you read 1 Timothy 4.16 in the Sermon of First Timothy four sixteen. Lafsi yako na mafundisho yako dumu katika mambo hayo maana kwa kufanya hivyo utaji oko anafsi yako na wale wakusikiao pia. Kigreza? Take take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself. And them that hear thee. That is it. Take heed unto thyself 
and unto the doctrine and the and sorry and unto the doctrine continue in them for in so doing thou shall ha, shall both save thyself and them that hear thee you know people have never known take heed of the doctrine i'm telling you in the present time very few pastors care about the doctrine of jesus christ even these parables, um, as I'm teaching you, nobody can teach you about them. They don't want. They want simple religion. When you come to the doctrine of justification by faith, very few people will teach it. When you come to the doctrine of election, very few people will teach it. So, you'll find that, I don't know where they, they teach some things, like prosperity and whatever, but here Paul, was an evangelist. And here, Paul, sorry, Timothy was ordained during the time of Paul as an evangelist or a teacher or a steward in the church of Christ. And here you can hear what Paul is warning. Take heed. Why? Because by teaching others the true doctrine, you also be also be teaching yourself. yourself. Let me tell you. When I start here teaching you the truth, I also teach myself. The same truth, if it is a truth, it reflects back unto me. So when I'm teaching you, I'm also teaching myself. So I'm, being, I'm benefiting as much as you are benefiting because I'm also learning. I'm also hearing this word unto me. But when you teach something which is not in line, you don't even teach yourself, nor do you help those people whom you are teaching. Sasa. So, a good steward must not preach the traditions of men or human rights and ceremonies, not the degree, decrees of general counsel, but holy and pure institutions of Jesus Christ. We, yani, a steward of God must not teach the traditions of men. The traditions, when you say traditions, it is the teaching which, you know, in, even in the churches, we have teachings which are taught in many uh, churches or many ministries. They have their own traditions. That's why we have different denominations in our days. We have different churches. If you go to their manifestos, or to their constitution, you find that they are the way they have their own way of teaching. Those are traditions of men. So they have diverted from the true teaching of Jesus Christ to traditions. That's why you say, when you go to a certain, a certain church, you will be told, "We we do this and this." If you go to another one, you'll be told, "We we do this and this." So we have different traditions in churches. But a true minister should teach the, is the pure institution of Jesus Christ. Pure. Not a tradition of anything. Don't. And that's why in Reformation, I've never told you anything to do with any church. All what I teach you is the church of Christ from the doctrine of the apostles. And in addition, through the literature of those who have built in the same, same foundation of the apostles. Because that is the spirit of God. But not any tradition of a church. That the church, and this church says this, this church says no. If we, do, we go in that direction, then we are wrong. Shasawa. So, this faithfulness of a minister of Christ consists in his declaring the whole counsel of God and not to keep back anything. Shasawa. Not to keep back anything because some of their hearers perhaps may not, may not approve it. There are some places when you go to teach, 
Unaambiwa uandike kile utafundisha kwa karatasi. You are told you write what you want to teach. Why do you think these people ask that? It is because they want to hear what you want to teach whether it is go, is going to be against their church tradition. So if it's going to be against their church tradition they would agree. Ni kweli? But a true minister, a faithful true minister must not must not keep back anything because of yani because of their hearers. If I come here I start looking at you that if I teach this I'm going to hurt you or I'm going to hurt him then that is wrong. I'm not supposed to hide I'm supposed to teach the whole gospel hide nothing open everything unto the people let them hear whoever is not going to be happy with the, with the doctrine let him go away but the word of god must be preached the word of god must be preached the way it is because you are not called by god to be preachers of men Hebrews of Galatians 1:10 Galatians 1:10 Maana sasa je ni mwanadamu ninaowasawishi au Mungu au nataka kuwapendeza wanadamu kama ningekuwa hata sasa na wapendeza wanadamu singekuwa mtumwa wa Kristo That is it Kama ningekuwa wa kupendeza wanadamu singekuwa mtumwa wa nani wa Kristo Hebu soma na Kiingereza for for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men for if I yet please men men I should not be the servant of Christ yeah if I preach to preach and to please men if my call is to preach something so that men may like me then I'm not a servant of God because God has called a true minister to teach or to yani to open up the truth so that men may see themselves and don't forget this truth is against the nature of these men that you are teaching so they are not going to be happy but if I'm going to teach so that these people and by you I want to save um, I I I, 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 I preach them then I'm not sent by God because what are you teaching them you are sent unto a fallen mankind you are sent by God to preach the word of God unto a fallen people people by who, who by nature are wicked and so if I want to please how can I please them and I'm telling them the truth you are this way and this way because of this unless I hide the truth so that I may please them to hear and what they want to hear and that's what people have done that's what people are doing in present generation pastors and ministers are not teaching the truth they want to please people that's why they are telling them come and see miracles and when you ask them how what type of miracles are you doing miracles are, are yani we are we are not in the type of miracles they will hate you because they want to attract people not because there is any teaching that miracle there's nothing even miracles were there during the early apostles time to make people understand who Christ is that what you are seeing that's what Christ is going to do in you to those who are called but the miracle they are just part of the gospel to bring people unto Christ but not to see the miracle then you teach them nothing about the miracle then they praise you that you are more powerful that is coming between the people and Christ. When anybody say come and see the miracle from who? From him. That man is coming between you and Christ because he want you to see him but not who? Not Christ. Ebu soma act 20:35. Acts 20:35.
Katika mambo yote nimewaonyesha ya kuwa kwa kushika kazi hivi nimewapasa kuwasaidia wanyonge na kuyakumbuka maneno ya Bwana Bwana Yesu jinsi alivyosema mwenyewe ni heri kutoa kuliko kupokea. Mm-hmm. Ni heri kutoa kuliko nini? Okay. Kupokea. So Paul was giving everything. He was working and he was giving even to the to, to people and yet he was a minister. Kingereza anasema I have showed you all things how that so neighboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. That it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that's why I say like Paul even here I have showed you everything that I have I'm going to teach this word. I've told this word this word of God for more than 10 years free of charge without asking without needing anything from anybody. So I have taught you all the counsel of God both theoretically and practically. So those who are going to be yeah the future teachers of this truth there's no one time they'll come and say mzee even here he alikuwa anafanya hivi no i have told i have shown you that you can do the work of god without what without being given anything by anybody but you can give yourself both money and even strength strength if possible ujipatie so that's what paul is saying here unapatiana hata kana kwamba ni pesa pahali natakikana if you have it give Lakini utakuja kuona many are going yani are seeking or they want to be stewards in the household of God because they want to get money. So if there is no money they cannot work. And many are like that. And that's why you see these people they will never never be satisfied. Even if they get millions some are, are doing the work of God and yet you you you'll see them even starting business outside. Situko nao sasa Somebody has been a pastor, he has gone to gotten a lot of money. Now he want to have even vehicles, even he want to have business around the world, just like the the, yani, the worldly people. Are you together? And when you go to, the, to his church or her church on Sunday, she is going to collect the money from you. And yet she is going to say or yani or he is going to say that um, yani you are giving unto who? Unto the Lord. How? Ndiyo <laughs> Nyinyi wenyewe mnajua ya kuwa mikono yangu hii imetumika kwa mahitaji yangu na ya wale waliokuwa pamoja nami. Mikono yake. Kiingereza nasema mnaka mikono yake imetumika katika mahitaji ya nani? Yake na wale walikuwa. So he was working. Yaani he could work and get money. But that money it was not for he and for himself alone. He could also give the other people. That's that is the true steward of God. You should not yeah, a true steward should not work because of money. If you put money before you, you can never serve God. I'm telling you. Kama tukaeka pesa hiwe ni pesa sasa tunafuata mtu anaangalia vile atapata pesa, you cannot teach the word of God because you have a worldly mind. Kigrese nasema mna gani? I have coveted no man's silver mm-hmm. or gold or apparel. Yeah, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. That is it. So, that is Paul talking. Huh? At 20 33 33. You can also read Act 20:26. Act 20:26. 
Kwa hiyo na washuhudia wote siku hii ya leo ya kuwa mimi sina hatia kwa damu ya mtu awaye yote. Na yeah, that is Paul. That's when a child of God, that that's, that's when a true steward of God when he has done anything open-handed without anything in your mind doing the work of God in this world you can say like Paul has said Ebrudi amesema namna gani na Kiingereza Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men I'm pure from the blood of all nobody can say Paul did this or that to advantage himself no and that's why he has said there that he worked everything even with his own hand even to help those people who are in need he was teaching them the truth he was doing everything because he was a lord steward so here we are talking of the lord steward so if you read exodus 25:40 nasema na gani Exodus 25:40 Nawe angalia ya kwamba uvifanye uh, uh, kama mfano wake alivyo alivyoonyeshwa mlimani That is Moses. Kiingereza And look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown be in the mountain yes that is moses ambaye anaambiwa make sure what you are shown on the the pattern you saw on the mount make sure you make everything in accordance with that pattern that is a that is a steward of god meaning god cannot give you anything you are supposed to do in accordance with that pattern god has shown you that pattern it must be or you are preaching or you are teaching must be in line with what god has taught you not what you have taught yourself so the faithfulness of a minister lies in his frequent preaching the word frequent preaching the word for like as a good householder know it it behooveth him to provide meat in due season for the family nikusema In fact, if you have a provision in your house as everyone knows you know your family in the morning they must take breakfast in the lunch time they must take this and supper they must take this that is your duty as a parent in your house so the same thing a yani a steward of god he must be instant in preaching the word of god always he must be instant he must be instant when ebusoma 2 timothy 4:2 2 timothy 4:2 4:2 inasema ihubiri neno uwe tayari wakati ukufao na wakati usio kufa karibia kemea na kuonya kwa uvumilivu wote na mafundisho yes kiingereza preach the word be instant in season out of season be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine that is it be instant when in season in season and out of You know when we here we say in season kusema like now I'm teaching this word of God in season because it is on a sab on a sabbath but that's not the end of it I should also teach the word of God out of season meaning at any one time in my life as a steward I must always make sure I'm teaching something of God even if if with my character When I meet the people make sure you are the salt of the earth you are always, you are always teaching in season and out of season Ukisoma act 2020 ibusoma 
ya kuwa sikujiepusha katika kuwatangazia neno lolote iwezalo kuwafaa bali naliwafundisha waziwazi na nyumba kwa nyumba yes Tigreza? and how i kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house i've shown you publicly and from house to house. house so paul was teaching in the public he was also going from house to house teaching the people at that time so that is being a faithful minister of god so uh, you can see that our faithfulness still consists in our care of the whole family and of everyone in particular so as to know their condition or how it is with them whether dead or alive growing or decaying weak or strong healthy or sickly you know we are supposed always to understand the congregation are still one supposed to understand the congregation are they understanding are they sick what what is their condition all these things are the work of a steward. The book of James 4, sorry, 5.14. James 5.14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yeah, that, is, that means, yani, uh, as a as an elder or a steward in the church, you should do all these things because you are given power by God and even God can hear you more than anybody else. So, a minister or a pastor of a church is like a deputy householder ought to be an humble person. He being but a servant should not carry it as if he was lord of the family. So he should be a, yani, yani, uh, 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 sorry he should be a meek person in all things he should be meekly in all things in order to serve the congregation of God Sasawa. Okay this steward they ought to be well stored because the want of the household may be great some being also too up to spend and waste what they have. Nukusama, a steward is well stored or given by God in order to cater for the family, for this family. And when you want to know this, you might get it in Jeremiah 3.15. If you saw Jeremiah 3.15, you see the Mungu anasema. Jeremiah 3.15 anasema. Anasema. Nami nitawapa nyinyi wachungaji wanipende zao moyo wangu watakao warisha kwa maarifa na fahamu Kiingereza and I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding which shall feed you with knowledge I'll give you pastors So God is the one who give through pastors who will feed you with knowledge and understanding so anybody else who passed through another door without the true doctrine of god he is not called by god he is not given by god but many will come in the name of the lord i'm a pastor i'm called by god but if he is not teaching the truth the way it's supposed he is not called by god that one is a lie that's a, that one is a so this steward they bring both new and old and old so when you say he bring both new and old uh, it means a steward of god is he should be very conversant with the old testament what has gone on during the old testament he should understand the past and also new testament he should be able to teach all these things in their true perspective he should 
He should be able to combine them. But not, no, there are some people, they cannot teach uh, the Old Testament. Some teach the, the New Testament, but the Old Testament they cannot teach. Some, they select some points, but they cannot combine them. When you tell them to combine them, it is a problem. But a true minister of God must bring both old and new without any selection. So, the old things may be meant all such truths that were from the beginning. That is the Old Testament. All truths that are purely moral in their own nature or principle of natural religion. You should understand all these things. That is the true and steward of God. And by doing that, you are going to, to be well received or well appraised in the kingdom of God. So, it is good to understand some of these things because some of you will be pastors. Some of you will be the steward of God. You never know the purpose of God or why God has called you or why, why you, are, you, are, you are hearing all these things. So that's why I like teaching you everything. Come here to me and A steward of God brings both old and new. So I teach you everything so that there's no one time you'll come to say that he say never taught us this. I never knew, I, I never had him. No, that's why I always try to, to mix up all these things because we, we need to know or to learn everything from Old Testament, even before creation. At the creation, even New Testament, and even revelations, and even what is going to happen, all these, these things we must learn because God has given us this treasure and it is in us and we have to teach it. Amen? Amen.